In this video, we're going over everything you need to know for the latest April Fool's event in War Thunder, where you can get involved in Mad Max as well as My Little Pony. This time, it's confusing, controversial, and downright strange. This is basically an extraction shooter in War Thunder form. Mad Thunder is the event based on Mad Max, the movie. Basically, your goal here is to spawn into a battle, collect up resources, and get out to a pre-designated extraction zone before you're either destroyed by any vehicles or the time runs out. Those resources can then be spent on upgrading your existing vehicles or unlocking new ones. Usually with April Fools you'll find that they're testing a new mechanic or looking to bring a new sort of feature to the game. This time it's not so clear what they're testing but there are a few theories. Before I talk about those theories though I just want to go over some of the vehicles that you can play in the Mad Max event. This is the engine unit, I don't know how you say it, but you get a 40mm Bofa cannon by the looks of things or at least it certainly is a 40mm even if it's not literally a Bofa cannon. It's decently far it's definitely not the fastest of the vehicles available in the event and it gets a carrying capacity of 25 which is kind of in the middle of what the other vehicles have access to. This one's got a carrying capacity of 25 and it's called a porcupine. It has got a 20mm cannon with a nice fast reload of 5 seconds. This one's really really fast and gets you around the battle really quickly. It can carry up to 25 of the strategic resources and it's really really fast but it only has 3 crew. The boar here has got a few more crew members although it's a little bit larger and a little bit more sluggish compared to the other two we just talked about. If you're fighting this thing, I think you're going to want to aim for the ammo as it takes out the vehicle in basically one hit. The boar's got a carrying capacity of up to 50 and you can see how it's a little bit more sluggish but you do have a bit more survivability. The weapon system you get is these two 23mm cannons that come off the back of the vehicle. Annoyingly you can't fire forward. The next one's called a reptile. There's this little machine gun on the front that you can fire off and then it has a 30mm machine gun auto cannon kind of thing and it can carry up to 25 different resources. I did see one of the upgrades you can get access to adds a massive rocket pod to the top of this thing and keep in mind that I'm only able to show you the most basic versions of each of the vehicles in this video so once you play the event and unlock some more stuff you'll see how things progress. The armadillo here is based on a BTR and you've got a 30mm auto cannon up top. I really like the flames coming out the back of it. The turret traverse speed is a little bit slow and this vehicle doesn't quite get up to speed as quickly as the other ones. So the rhino here has got a 105mm cannon. It's got a funny shell that's just marked as incendiary but it's got a Hesh picture. This one's definitely again slower to accelerate than some of the other vehicles. The Rhino can carry up to 25 of the resources just like many of the other vehicles and the shell that it's firing is basically just a massive incendiary bomb. Uh, it certainly is a bit weird. The final vehicle is this mule that's just basically a massive truck clearly for carrying as many resources out of the battle as possible. You get to carry up to 100 in individual resources. You get an auto cannon on the front as well as like a machine gun out the back. Clearly basically for going into the battle, getting as many resources out of it as possible and getting out of there. I don't know how successful that's going to be because it's just a large lumbering vehicle so I feel like you're going to be able to get taken out pretty easily but we'll have to see how it gets on. For the things that might be being tested in this April Fools, the most obvious is the dynamic weather. Roughly about halfway through the battle you'll notice that suddenly a sandstorm appears and visibility is massively reduced. So maybe you're looking at something maybe like Volokolamsk where a snowstorm might come in or just Sinai you could have a huge desert sandstorm appear and, and completely take out vision of your vehicles. I'm not too sure how thermals interact with snowstorms and sandstorms but it's going to be interesting to see how it affects the gameplay of regular matches. There's some new mechanics when it comes to tyres and you'll notice that they're able to completely fall off vehicles where previously it wasn't exactly obvious that a tyre was damaged. Something to be aware of is that the vehicles in this game mode have the simulator game mode style sights. When you look down the sniper scope you might notice to the left or right of your sniper scope visual you can actually see the barrel of the tank which means you've got to deal with a little bit of parallax when you're firing so you've got to adjust for that deviation between where the gun actually is and where your camera is. The event is unique and relatively interesting. The problem is the grind to unlock upgrades and additional vehicles is just too much and it's just really not worth it. The distance you spawn from the extraction zone combined with how likely it is that you're just not going to make it even after driving for several minutes is just too much and it just becomes really frustrating beyond a certain point that to progress in this game mode you've just got to play a stupid amount. 
Meanwhile on War Thunder Mobile, what's really cool is you can go back in time all the way to 2013 and check out what the ponies were like for the original April Fools War Thunder event. If you didn't know already, the original April Fools for War Thunder was ponies flying around and this was the beginning of the last decade and a bit of April Fools every single year. We've got a couple of different ponies to choose from, we can't play all of them just yet as they'll unlock over the next couple days but at the moment there's access to four. There's two close air support ones as well as two more fighting dedicated ones one of the fighter ones is like 50 cow pony and then there's another one that's got 20 mils that is sort of like slower rate of fire but more damage per hit you've got another one that gets access to some dumb fire rockets for taking out some of the anti-aircraft and then you get some super fun 45 millimeter cannons which are i'm pretty sure taken directly off the stuka and if you've played with those in aerialistic battles then you'll know exactly how fun they are and then there's a bomber pony that's got access to two 250 kilogram bombs as well as some machine guns. The voice lines in the game mode are very strange. Bravo! They're basically just super high pitched versions of the normal voiceover lines. I'm not sure if they've re-recorded these or they've put the original ones through some sort of filter but they are funny to listen to. They still have an overload g-force warning coming up on the screen occasionally when you turn a little bit too hard. The platforms have got anti-aircraft and they can contribute to winning the match but this is mostly just a team deathmatch. The flight controls on mobile are actually a lot better than you might expect and I definitely recommend giving it a go. It's a very fun game mode and something that I think a lot of people will enjoy. 